Hello and welcome to this uh, video on a uh, shum up or a shoot 'em up. And this is the first one that we'll have on a series of how to do a shoot 'em up. You know, sort of like the old Space Invaders and stuff. But it'll teach us a lot about JavaScript and it'll also hopefully teach us a lot about using HTML5. What I've got here is a little platform and this is. This right here is the border of my canvas, my canvas element. Obviously, I've made it larger. If I use my left arrow key, I'm going to tap on my left arrow key now. The, the, uh, this platform that's right here will move to the left. And it'll stop when it goes to the right there. If I tap my right arrow key, it starts going to the right. So here it is, my left arrow key, my right arrow key, my left arrow key. Now I'm going to hit the bottom arrow key. Bottom arrow key stops it. Okay. If I hit the top arrow key, boink, there goes a bullet up in the air. Hey, that's pretty cool. Top arrow key again. All right, I'm going to hit the right arrow key. I'm going to top arrow key. And there it is. So what I can do is is that I can begin to start shooting uh, little dudes that are coming across here by moving my platform and shooting these guys down. Then I can elaborate on this and show a scorekeeper here uh, and, and all these other cool things. Okay, let's see, let's see what's important about this. Let's see the tricks that we needed to be aware of to do this. The first one is, uh, and we've talked about this in previous lessons, I have to have it so that when the platform is going to the left, uh, it'll stop. I don't want it going off the canvas and disappearing. That's obviously going to be confusing to the game player. So when I tap the right arrow key, I, I don't have to hold it down. It's just going, and there it goes again. The other thing, too, is that I'm tapping the left arrow key several times, and notice it stays at the same speed. And I wanted to do that so that I don't have more than one recursive function running at the same time. So every time I, t I tap an arrow key, I, I stop the, uh, the uh, uh, timeout uh, function uh, so that it doesn't get confusing. The other thing that I, I need to do here is that you see where the, where the bullet comes up? The bullet always comes up in the center of this platform. It comes up right up in here. So there is a bullet there right now. But you don't see it because its its color is the same as the background color. Uh, but it's always following the coordinate. The, the 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 bullet graphic is always following the x coordinate of where the platform is, plus uh, I think it's 32 more pixels to appear in the center. And it's always sitting a few pixels higher than the platform. And the reason for that is I'm constantly repainting it in black and then and then having it go in its own color. So that the, the bullet, even though you don't see it, it's there. It's not until I hit the up arrow key that it now it appears yellow. Once it gets to the top, it has the program has to know that it's at the top. It has to paint it black so you don't see it. And then it has to move it back down to where the platform is. So that's why if I press the up arrow key twice, uh, nothing really happens. I don't get another bullet because this recursive function is still going and it's not going to stop until it gets up here. Then it's going to repaint that yellow uh, bullet, which is just a small rectangle. It's going to repaint it black and then move it back down to uh, to the just a little bit above the platform. Okay, so these are the things that we need to look for when we look at the code. Let's take a look at the code here and see what we've got. What we've got down here is we have the same stuff we've had before with an exception. There's my script element inside my body element. What I've got here is I've got the my canvas fill stuff get content uh, 2D. I also have another one, my canvas 2 get content ID. The difference between this one here, my canvas, and my canvas too is the same canvas, but this other one's going to allow me to draw another a different rectangle, and we'll see how how I do that. So that's the first thing I have to do. The other thing that I need to do here is that I have the body element, and we've done this one before, and this is on key down, which key? This is anywhere in the body of the of the uh, document. So I don't have to have my mouse over the canvas or, or anything. Uh, whatever key I press, it's going to get the event key code. Okay. 
and of course there is the size of my canvas all right, now let's go up here and just very quickly look at the style and how I set up the style. This should be familiar to us from the other uh, videos. The body I made the background color black. The canvas I made the border style ridge and I made the border width five pixels. So that gives me this nice definition here of where the canvas is. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to come down here and I want to look at my key code event. So anytime I press any key on the keyboard, this which key event is activated. And that's because of this from down here on key down, which key event. So which key event is this function I created here? And that's the function right there. So if the first thing I'm going to do is stop the timer. Then I'm going to look at the key is a variable that I'm going to set to event.keycode. Key is, is only defined here. It's not defined outside. So this key is a local variable. It's only local to this function. Its value and contents are only known when this function is being activated. Once I'm no longer using this function, then the value of key disappears. And that's the way I want it. That's why I use it as a local variable for the first time in here. And I do not use it outside of the functions and make it a global variable. So if the key code is equal to, and, don't, and remember, two of these together means equal 37, that means it's the left arrow key. So it's going to call the function move left. Else if the key code is 38, and that's the top arrow key, uh, it's going to call the function shoot. Else if the key code is 39, and that's the right arrow key, it's going to call the function move right. Else if the key code is equal to 40, it's simply going to stop the timer. 40 is the bottom arrow key. And stop timer, there's my function stop timer. Right there, stop timer. And there's my function stop timer. And that simply clears time out of the timer. Okay, now, let's take a look at the uh, move left, move right stuff. But first, let's come up here to my global variables. There's the value of x. And x is the distance that the... Uh, that my platform is from the left, like the, my little platform here. Let me refresh this. And so this is 200 pixels from here to here. And where did I get that 200 from? I got that 200 from down here. Okay, see, that's where I'm doing. That's where I fill the rectangle. That's this X, and that's this Y. Then that's a little tan dude. Okay, a little tan dude right there. Okay, so that's where I set this up. The other thing is timer, of course, I have to make that global because it's used in more than one function. Now, x2 and y2, that's going to be the coordinates of the bullet. And remember, x2 has to be changing all the time as I move the platform. So initially, this coordinate x2 starts out at 223. And you might say, wait a minute, why 223? Well, remember, this is 200, and I want the x coordinate of the bullet to be right in here. So that when I hit my top arrow key, it starts from the center of this. So, so x2 uh, is going to be a little bit more than x itself. x is for the platform. x2 is for the bullet. And then I have y2 up here as well, which is a global variable. And that's 320. And why 320? Because if I come down here to where the platform is, the platform's y value is 330. And I want that bullet to start just a little bit on top of the platform. And the reason for that is because I'm overpainting the bullet. And if it started right where the platform was, it'd leave a little notch right there, a little black notch from where it was before. And I don't want that to happen. OK, so I've got these values here. And these are global variables because these right here are declared outside of all the other functions. So let's look at function move right. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repaint the canvas. I don't care about repainting the canvas now because when I'm doing a move right, I'm not doing any shooting. It's just moving right or moving left or what have you, okay? So, and I just stop it. So there's no, no shooting going on. So I'll just uh, reset the width to itself. The fill style is going to be tan since I forgot about it. Now I'm going to fill the rectangle, and this is my platform, X plus plus going to keep the same y value and the same dimensions. However, I also now have to make x2 equal to the new value of x plus 23. 
Remember we said that the coordinates of the bullet must follow where the canvas is going. Now if x is less than or equal to 350, I can always keep doing this. I'll, I'll, I'll do the recursive. I'll do the recursiveness. There's move right and it's calling move right. It's calling itself. So this 350, this is the right extremes of, I'm going to hit the right arrow key, of where the, uh, the, the plat this, this right here is, is the extreme of where the platform can go. If I let it go any further, it would start getting shorter because it's going off the canvas, and this might be confusing to the player. So I don't want that to happen. The move left function is very similar to the move right. Uh, now I'm just decrementing, and I still have to set x2 equal to the value. And now if x is greater than or equal to 1, it'll keep the recursive function of move left going right here. Okay, And I can see that that happens here. I just tap the uh, my left arrow key, and it keeps moving to the left until the value of, of less than 0 is reached over here. Okay, and then it stops recursiveness. Now let's look at shoot. All right, shoot is when I press the up arrow key, right? It's going to go right here. Okay, uh, key code 38 is the up arrow key, and it's calling shoot. Here's shoot. The very first thing I do is I'm going to do a fill style of black, and then I'm going to draw that bullet, and it'll be drawn in black first. Now it's going to have the value of x2, and that's, uh, that's going to be a constant because that's going to be wherever x2 is. So if I have it, say, here, and I shoot it, see, it always stays right here. Okay, It always stays where the center of this is. And what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be decrementing uh, y2. y2, of course, is its y coordinate up here. And as I decrement it, it's going to give the illusion that it's moving up. Uh, okay. All right, so now if y2, that's the y coordinate of the bullet, is greater than or equal to zero, it's going to do this shooting. And notice I have it set to uh, one millisecond. The problem is it's really not going that fast, and that I, I'm running in the refresh rate problems. But I'll, I'll show you in future videos how to give the illusion that it's going faster. So as long as it hasn't reached the top, it's going to be recursively calling this. Now, if it does reach the top, in other words, I have an else here, now here's what's going to happen. We're going to fill it with black. Wherever it is, we're going to black it out. Now we're going to set y2, its y coordinate, back to 320. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to effectively move the bullet back down here. But the, the player doesn't realize that, but that's okay to get it reloaded, so to speak. And then what it's going to do now is simply going to fill the, uh, fill the rectangle uh, with that, which is, uh, is going to be black. So it, it, it just means I know where it's sitting. Okay. So I think I covered all of the important elements uh, all the way from the top here, the, the, uh, the shoot them up, the shum up. And, uh, and I hope you actually try coding this. And it, in a sense, it's good you can't copy and paste the code. Because in, if you just copy and paste the code, I don't know if you really learn anything. But if you try to type the code and play around with the code, you can really start learning uh, some stuff, some cool stuff. Uh, and you learn through mistakes. You know, the expert is the person that's made the 10,000 mistakes. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.